So in this next video, the thing that we'll consider is the attributes of components. So just to recap what we did in the earlier uh, video, uh, we've created a very simple circuit here which has input and output uh, pins connected by a wire uh, and we have a probe uh, a component which allows us to see the value on the wire. Uh, we can click on wires as well. Uh, so for example, when we're in simulation mode, if we click on any wire, we'll see that the value uh, of the wire is uh, tooltipped uh, for us. Uh, but one of the things that we can do is we can change the attributes of the uh, components. So just to illustrate this, uh, if I go back to construction mode and click on this component here, which is the input pin, uh, I can uh, basically change uh, some of its attributes. So for example, I might decide uh, that it would be helpful uh, to label the pin on the circuit. Uh, so I type in to the label input. Uh, okay, I can't do that. I have to change that. Some keywords are reserved. I'll just call it in. Uh, uh, like so. Uh, I have to do that again. Uh, I'll call it in zero. And you can see there it is. Do the same thing over here. And we could call this uh, out uh, zero, like so. And you can see that uh, the label appears uh, like uh, that. Uh, we could do the same thing, presumably, for the probe. So we could say uh, probe zero, like so. Uh, and we can see that we've changed the appearance of the circuit. So initially when we think about this, we might say, well, that's pretty, but what does it do? Well, the ability to give labels to components and especially to pins will come in very, very uh, useful later on. Uh, but another thing that we can do is we can change the actual functionality of any of the components uh, by changing their attributes. So it's not just a question of putting a label on something, we can actually change uh, the behavior of a component. So at the moment, this circuit, uh, in terms of its input and output, is a one-bit uh, input and a one-bit output. But we might decide that we want perhaps the uh, circuit to be able to process four, four bits. So we select the component that we want to change the uh, attributes of, and we change it to four bits. And immediately that we do that, we can see that the circuit goes into an error state. So the first thing to do is just to observe uh, that the input pin now has four zeros, four bits, which means that it can take a four-digit binary number. But the consequence of this, as we can see from the error state in the circuit, is that the wire is now incompatible, as is the output pin uh, for the uh, uh, circuit. Uh, the wire is one bit and the output pin is one bit and the probe is also uh, not compatible uh, with that. So in order to fix that uh, we have a number of different things that we can do. Uh, we could actually select the wire uh, uh, and try and change it like that but actually we don't need to do that. Uh, the wire will intelligently update when we have updated all the components. So if we go to the output pin and select it and change its uh, number of uh, bits, functional bits to four, you can see that immediately that we do that, uh, the uh, uh, circuit comes back into a good state and we see that the probe and the wire automatically update. So let's go to simulation mode uh, and we'll assert into the input number, uh, input pin, uh, the binary, uh, uh, the four digit binary number equivalent to decimal three. So we type one one, uh, which is uh, equal to three. And we observe that the output pin uh, uh, displays a four bit binary number, which is zero, zero, one, one. We note the B for binary. Uh, and we also see as well that the probe updates as well. Uh, so that's quite neat. But what we can also do as well is we can change the display uh, uh, of the components. So I'll demonstrate this with the probe. Uh, we're in construction uh, mode and I change uh, the radix of the probe from binary, which is its default, to unsigned decimal. And when we do that, you can see that the probe updates and it now displays uh, the uh, uh, decimal digit 
3. And you'll note the little red X indicator uh, uh, shows that this has uh, changed. So I'll go back to simulation mode uh, and I'll assert the binary number 2 into the input, which is 0010. Zero, zero. Uh, and you can observe that in the output. And you can also see the decimal representation on the probe component uh, has updated uh, as well. Okay, so uh, there are all kinds of attributes that we can change uh, and you could probably just experiment with them. Those are the two that uh, occur to me. Uh, and of course, when we do the change from one bit input pin uh, and output pin to four bit input and output pin, when we click on the wire, of course, you see that the tooltip that displays it updates as well so that it is also four bits. So in reality, of course, if we were looking at a circuit, uh, this would be four wires in the circuit, but this is a convenience uh, that Logisim uh, enables for us. Uh, before I finish the video, I just want to also draw your attention uh, to the toolbox representation of the pin. And this is a little bit confusing, but I'll just explain it for a second or two. Uh, Logisim has been around for a long time. Uh, and in its most recent update, uh, it switched away, or its most recent major update, it switched away from using uh, a, a standard type of pin, which you can see displayed on screen here, uh, to the pins that we've been using in this video. Uh, so the uh, pins uh, that are known as classic pins are these pins here. Uh, so I'll just uh, make this one an output pin which I do by clicking on it and I change its attributes to output and then I send it facing west uh, and I can connect uh, like so. So this portion of the diagram or the circuit is effectively the same as the circuit that we uh, have considered in this video and the previous video uh, and we can simulate uh, just as we did before by clicking on the input pin and observing the output pin and the state of the wire like so. Uh, so I draw your attention to this. Uh, so some of the videos that you'll see on the internet and some of my videos may use these old style pins. Uh, but as I update this sequence of videos, I'm going to switch all of the circuits over uh, to the more uh, new input and output pins. Mainly, I think, because they just give a little bit more information uh, about the value that's being asserted onto the component.